Hello. So in this video, we're going to talk about bubbles. Now, that term in itself may not mean much uh, to many of you, but bubbles is a digital mind mapping tool. And I think it's worth knowing about. Um, I So you can do old school mind mapping, right? Where you just write it out on a piece of paper. Uh, you start, you put your key topic, core uh, issue, whatever it is, in the center, draw a circle around it, put branches out to connect to sub ideas. Totally fine. Nothing whatsoever wrong with doing it old school. But uh, this is a digital age, and most people, I think, are, are increasingly more comfortable working digitally. And so Bubbleus is one tool you can use. It's a, it's a free online tool. Um, and it's fairly easy. It allows you to do the same kind of thing, just you're creating digital mind maps. And there actually are a couple of benefits of it. So in this video, I'm basically going to show you how Bubbleus works. So this is what the website is. Um, this is the, the base website, bubbl.us, as you can see up here in the URL bar. Now, uh, you can register an account and then sign in to Bubbleus. And there's a couple of benefits of that. I think the biggest one is that you can save your mind maps so you can come back to them um, either from this computer or a different computer or whatever it is. Um, there may also be a couple more features, but I'm going to show you the basic tools that you need to use Bubbleus effectively in this video anyway. Now, I don't have a Bubbleus account, um, so I'm not going to sign in. I'm going to do the free option. And so if that's what you want, you can click this mind map now button where it says start without signing in. And this will take you to the mind mapping screen. There it is. So this is what you see initially. Um, and you can zoom in and out. You, I'm just using my mouse roller, but you can also zoom from here. Um, so whatever. So that's what it is. So you're going to start the same way you would. And they have click here to start in text, which I think is dumb, but a minor inconvenience. So you put in whatever word it is you're starting with. I'm going to start with university just because I can. Um, this is the one I actually had taught a lesson uh, to my students the other day about mind mapping and university was the term that we used. Now, one of the good things about this is it kind of tells you directly how you can actually uh, sort of use, use hotkeys basically to move through stuff. So if you want to create another bubble, and this is how I would do a first branch generally, though maybe that's not actually the best way of doing it. Um, or you can, they call it a child. I would call it a branch and a sub branch. So I'm going to press tab and that's going to create a second bubble here. So if I'm thinking of this as my first branch, actually, I think I want to change I want to change the color of this just to make it stand out a little bit more. I'm going to put it in green. Um, actually, I think that the children are in green. So instead, I'm going to put it in pink. Perfect. Okay. So um, what's a branch we could put off of university? Let's put, let's spell that right, even though it's not crucial for this video, tuition. Now, I want to connect university to tuition um, because when you create a new bubble, they aren't necessarily directly connected. And this is why maybe starting with, with a child is better. Starting with a, a, a sub branch is better. But you can use this connecting line tool here. Um, and if, so you select the bubble you want to connect from. Uh, click the little arrow key to indicate connect, and then you draw a line to it. I'm going to, it's not letting me click and drag. Um, you can change the layout. You've got different approaches. Um, the basic approach is grid. So 
from tuition, I want to add some sub bubbles. So I can just click on this bit here where it says control enter. Uh, so under tuition, I'm going to put in state. Then I'm going to just click control enter because I think that's easier. I'm going to put out of state and then control enter one more time. I'm going to just create three to show you the basics here. Um, and I'm going to put student debt. Now, what I actually want to do, I want to, well, okay. So first I'm, I'll show you some of the different options. So they default to grid. You can create a tree, which looks like this. Um, so the difference really between a grid and a tree is you have straight lines. Oh, not what I meant to click. Um, with a tree, you have a sort of downward and outward forking. That's an aesthetic choice, I think, more than anything else. Column does the same kind of thing, but the diff I would say column actually has more of a difference here because this suggests hierarchy, right? Visually, having one on top of the other suggests that in state comes first, out of state comes second, student debt comes third. So if that's what you want for yourself, if you want to, to sort of rank these things in importance or precedence or something like that, I think tree can be a really useful approach. Um, and then you can do circle. I don't really have enough of them that circle is kind of meaningful here, but if you had say six, eight, ten of them, that would be useful. But I'm going to put this back to grid. Now, what I want to do actually is drag student debt over here. So you can click and drag, but then I want to connect student debt back to university because I, this is one of the things. I think student debt and the issue of university itself can be directly connected. So I'm, again, using those tools that Bubbles gives me um, to, to uh, expand what we've got here. And then I'm going to press control enter. And that has now put this bubble, unfortunately, right here, which is not really convenient. So I'm going to go ahead and drag that up here. Um, and I'm going to put debt relief. So this is, I mean, this is basically the way that this works. You can create an infinite number of additional bubbles, an infinite number of um, branches or children. You can connect all the things, you can move things around. Um, and if this is, I don't know why this function is set up this way, but if you have moved a sub branch on its own, and that won't move when you shift the main branch. Um, but in this case, because I haven't moved in state or out of state, they're going to move with tuition, whereas student debt is going to remain there. So again, this is the same basic thing that you get with regular mind mapping, just you're doing it digitally. And actually, that is one of the benefits of doing this digitally is that you can move stuff around. So let's say I wanted to put another, another branch here, and I'm going to change the color to a similar yellow to tuition. Um, and I wanted to make that, um, cost of running a university. Now it might, and then I'm going to draw my arrow. I'm going to draw my arrow to tuition. Now it might make visual sense to have cost of running a university between university and tuition. And if I hadn't, if I started with tuition the way that I actually did with this particular mind map, then if I was drawing this by hand, I couldn't necessarily fit cost of running a university in here. But because I can click and drag, I can put that there and I can adjust where this one is so I can have my sub bubbles down there, whatever it is. And who knows, maybe I even connect this there, things like this. Um, you can also, you can hide branches. Obviously, I've done that a couple of times on accident here. Um, you can also unpin a bubble, which basically means that is now disconnected 
uh, from its original uh, or from the from the place that I moved it to. That snapped back to where it had been at the beginning. If that's something you want to do, great. If not, that's fine too. Um, you can use this insert function and you can attach stuff, um, hyperlinks, attachments, uh, icons, notes, formulas, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you've got a decent amount of versatility. Oh, nope. When I unpinned that one, it um, da, 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 da. it totally dropped that out of there. So I want to undo that because I want student debt uh, back in there. So yeah, so these are the main sort of features of Bubbles. Um, you can use this new bubble tool as well down here, but you can also do that again from any of uh, from any of the major bubbles up there. Now, as I had said before, one of the benefits of registering an account with Bubbles is that you can then um, save your in progress mind maps. So that's really useful if you start creating a mind map, but you don't have time to finish it. You need to come back to it or something like this. Super useful for that purposes. Uh, but if that's not the situation, if you want to just do say one mind map and you, you map out the whole thing the way that you want it and you're not signed into an account, you can do save as. So you can save this as a JPEG, a PNG, HTML outline, or plain text. Probably JPEG is the best option, but you know, there it is. Um, you can also select print, and I think this will probably give you the Microsoft print to PDF option. So you can save this, I mean, indirectly through through the printer option, you can save this as a PDF. I'm going to not do that because I don't really care. But um, again, this is basically the, the set of key tools that you need to create a mind map through Bubbles. Again, this is something you can definitely do by hand in, in a sort of physical hard copy. Um, but again, for people who are more comfortable working digitally, which is most people, I think in 2023, most students, um, as well as even most scholars, most uh, most writers, et cetera, et cetera, today. Bubbles is a useful tool. It gives you the resources to do this digitally, and it makes it fairly easy and straightforward to understand. 